Wouldn't it be cool to just be able to hear a song and think, I'm going to play that? Then you sit at the piano and you spend five minutes working it out and then you can play it. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, actually, it's very possible. I do this exact thing pretty much every day for TikToks, shameless plug, for teaching, and just if there's something that I want to be able to play but there isn't sheet music that is easily accessible for it. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. The way to learn any song by ear is to follow a formula, and the more you do this, the quicker you will be and the more natural it will become. So the first step is to find the bass line. If you are listening to a standard pop song, this usually follows a three section structure, which includes a verse, a chorus, and some form of bridge or breakdown. Each of these sections usually has a different chord sequence and therefore a different bass line. If you wanted to work something out that doesn't follow that structure, then you will just want to listen for any kind of repeating pattern to make your life easier when it comes to working out the bass line. So to work out the bass line, ignore everything else in the song except when the chords feel like they might have changed. The way that I would normally do this is by singing the note that I think sounds right for that chord. And then I search on the piano to find that note. Let's try it. I'll play you a chord and see if you can hear the bass note. The root note to that chord is this note. If you didn't get that, then keep testing yourself by listening to songs and finding bass notes. Over time, you will get very good at it. When you have sung the note and found it on the piano, then repeat this for every chord every time you hear the chord change. Then you should have a series of bass notes that make up the foundations of your song. If you are playing a song using the standard verse, chorus, bridge structure, you can repeat this process for the verse, then the chorus, and then the bridge section. Once you've pieced it together, you should have the bass line for the full song. The next step is a very important one before we get to working anything else out. And this is to work out what key the song is and what scale it is using. Now this is actually not as hard as you may think because you already know a lot of the notes you'll be using from that bass line that we've worked out. So the song is most likely going to be using one of these 12 different scales. You should notice that the bass line is using the same notes over and over. For example, if you find that one of your notes is a G sharp, which is this note here, then you probably won't find a G in the song, because the type of G you are going to be using in the song is a G sharp instead of a G. So for this example, you know that you aren't going to be using any of the scales that use normal Gs. Instead, you'll use the ones that use G sharps which means that you can narrow down the scales that you are using even more with each note in your bass line. If this random song also uses a D, for example, that means you can cross out all the scales that don't use a D. And just like that, you already know that this song is in the key of A major and uses the scale of A major. I'll give you another example. Let's say we have a B flat in our bass line. Well, we can get rid of any of the scales that don't have a B flat in them. Let's say the next note in the bass line is a D flat. Well now we can get rid of all the scales that don't have a B flat and a D flat in them. And let's say the next note in the bass line is a G. Now we know that we are in the key of A flat major because this is the only scale that includes these three notes. The reason for working out which scale a song is using is for a number of different reasons. However, the main reason is because then you know exactly what notes you are going to be using for the next step, which is the chords. So we've worked out the bass line and we've worked out what scale the song is using. Now we need to use both of these to work out the chords. So for each of your bass notes, you're going to be playing a different chord. You should play the bass note in the left hand and the chord in the right hand. The types of chords we are going to play are chords called triads. A triad is a three note chord and it is where you essentially play every other note in the scale. So if we use the scale of G major as an example, G major uses the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp. And then you get back to another G. If I wanted to play a triad using this scale, starting on the note G, the notes I would use would be G, B, and D, because these notes are every other note from G. If I wanted to use this scale and play a triad starting on D, the notes I would get would be D, F sharp, and A. This means that using this scale, there are seven different triads that can be used, because there are seven different notes in the scale, and you can play a triad starting on each of the seven notes. However, if we go back to the bass line, it might not always be that the first note of the triad is the bass note. You could also have one of the other two notes being the bass note. So in the scale of G, if our bass note is a C, for example, the triad could be a C triad, which is C, E, G, an A triad, which is A, C, E, or an F sharp triad, which is F sharp, A, C.
And this is because these three triads all include the bass note, which is a C. So for each of your bass notes, you want to work out which of the seven triads in your scale include your bass note. Then you need to listen to which of the three possible triads sounds closest to the song you were trying to work out. Here is an example for you. If our bass notes are A, G sharp, F sharp, and E, and we know the scale we are going to be using is an A major scale because this scale includes all of our notes, the notes in this scale are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and G sharp, and then you are back to another A. The first note in our bass line, which is an A, is going to be one of three triads. A, C sharp, E, F sharp, A, C sharp, or D, F sharp, A. Because all of these triads include our bass note, which is an A. In this example, let's say the first one sounds the closest to our song, A, C sharp, E. The next note in the bass line was a G sharp. So the triads in an A major scale that include a G sharp are G sharp, B, D, E, G sharp, B, and C sharp, E, G sharp. And for this one, let's say that the closest one to the song is the second triad, which is E, G sharp, and B. The third bass note is an F sharp, so the possible triads are F sharp, A, C sharp, D, F sharp, A, and B, D, F sharp. And let's say this time the closest one to the song is the second one, which is D, F sharp, and A. And the final bass note was an E, so the possible triads in the scale are E, G sharp, B, C sharp, E, G sharp, and A, C sharp, E. And let's say for this one, the closest sounding one to the song is E, G sharp, and B. That means for this song, we now have all the chords for this section. We have a bass note of an A with A, C sharp, E in the right hand. We then have a G sharp in the bass with E, G sharp, B in the right hand. Then we have an F sharp in the bass with D, F sharp, A in the right hand. And then we have an E in the bass with E, G sharp, B in the right hand. If you are getting value from this video, be sure to like the video and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Thanks. While we're here, if you want to improve your sight reading on the piano, I have 22 free sight reading exercises available to download from my sight reading book that I will leave in the description for you. If you have never come across triads or scales or anything like that before, this is quite a lot of information. So if anything confuses you about this, leave a comment and I will always reply and try to be as detailed as I can. Okay, so now we have the bass line and the chords. The last part to work out is the melody. Melodies are a little bit more difficult to pin down because every song is going to be different. However, there are some general points to listen for when you are trying to work out a melody by ear. So melodies are also going to use the notes in the scale for the song. If you've worked out from your bass line that the song is in the key of G major, for example, then the melody will also use the notes from the scale of G major. The second thing to note is that melodies tend to use a lot of notes from the chord you are on. So if you are in the key of G major and you are playing a G triad, which is G, B and D, then the melody is likely going to use and stick around these notes. So if you are listening to a melody and you know the chord that is underneath the melody, then try those notes first and you will likely stumble upon where the melody is. Another thing to remember is that melodies are usually sung and singers don't want to be jumping around. So the melody usually moves by step in the scale rather than jumps. So if the melody note is a B, for example, then the next note might be an A or a C because these are around the note B. It should be a bit more obvious in the song if a melody is jumping, and when it does jump, it will usually jump to another note from the triad that you are on. So here is an example of all of this in action, and I'm going to use the song Let It Be by The Beatles, because that's an absolute classic. So listening to the song, I can hear four chords that are repeating. The first note to me sounds like a C. and then the chord changes and I can then hear a G. After that, it goes up to an A. And then it goes down and that sounds like an F. So the four bass notes I can hear are C, G, A and F. Okay, so now that we have the bass notes, I need to work out what scale these notes could be from. There is a normal C rather than a C sharp or a C flat, so that rules out any scales with a C sharp or a C flat. And then there is a G, so we can rule out scales that use G sharps and G flats. Then there is a normal A, so that rules out A sharps and A flats. And finally, a normal F, so that rules out F sharps and F flats. That has narrowed the scale choices down to C major, 
F major or B flat major because all three of these scales include these four notes. However, the first note in the bass line is a C. So that makes me think it's probably C major, which has no sharps and flats. So our scale will be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then you go back to another C. So now we know the bass notes, we can work out the chords. So the first note is a C. And the triads in the scale of C major that include a C are C, E, G, A, C, E, and F, A, C. And the chord that sounds the most right to me is C, E, G. So this is the chord I will use. The next bass note is a G, and the triad options for this chord are G, B, D, E, G, B, and C, E, G. And once again, the first of these sounds the best to me, so we will use that one. The third bass note is an A, and the triads including an A are A, C, E, F, A, C, and D, F, A. And the one that sounds the best is once again that first one, which is A, C, and E. Then the final bass note is an F, and the triads for an F using the scale of C major are F, A, C, D, F, A, and B, D, F. And the first triad here also sounds the best, so we will use the triad F, A, C. So now we have the bass notes, and we have the chords that go with those bass notes. If you want to sing with your playing, then you can just stop here. When I find myself in times of trouble, like the worry comes to me. However, if you want to work out the melody as well to add into your playing, then we need to find that on the piano. So the first triad is C, E, G. So the notes that are going to be in the melody are likely going to be around these notes. So if we find the notes on the piano, we can see that the melody starts with E, F, G, G, A, E, which includes a lot of E's and G's from the chord. Once you have found the first few notes from the song, you can then be guided more by your ear and try and find where you think the melody goes next. Another important thing to be able to do when playing the songs you've worked out is to be able to understand how to give your music meaning and how to make different emotions in your music. And that is exactly what this video is about. So if you are interested in that, then head on through and I will see you there.